Hooty who all my stock market gamblers welcome today I'm Tom Mike I'm so glad you're here well it's Friday we made it to the end of the week what a week it's been all right so what we got going on today in the markets well we got kind of this short squeeze going again Dow's up about 300 Nasdaq's up at 270 and the S&P has pushed back up to 4200 so once again they're pushing the market higher a lot of people are short in this market and this that's what's causing these short squeezes now today a lot of the traders have on vacation for the long weekend a lot of the traders took it off so they're pushing it up higher we'll see I think next week they're going to send it back down lower this is my take this is what the HYG is telling me now the HYG that's the junk bonds the junk bonds are not going with this rally the junk bonds are still in a downward pattern where the stock market is in an upward pattern okay so the junk bonds tell me that this is going to reverse that's my take that's what I think is going to happen they're pricing in a lot of perfection they're pricing in that the debt ceiling is going to be resolved they're pricing in that this financial crisis is over I'm not sure either one of those are going to happen but that's just my take now of course they're going to raise that debt ceiling eventually but probably not before they cause some havoc in the stock market and this financial crisis with the banking system I don't think it's over yet I think a lot of banks are going to go out of business I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit all right so let's get over to the real estate market now I love I love this I love this Yahoo Finance right one of my favorite places they come out with this article and this is the first line of the article if you don't already own a home you're gonna be screwed for years to come <laughs> Yahoo Finance they go on to say that there's never gonna be a housing bust again because everybody of course is locked in at that three percent rate for the next 30 years we're never going to have a housing bust now this is great I mean they should have done this a long time ago think about it we're never going to have a housing crash again we're only going to have housing booms from here this is fabulous news now of course it's not my take you know my take I believe we're coming down 50 percent from the highs already down about 10 percent in most areas so we got about another 40 percent to go now this is just my take but the article goes on to say that there's never going to be any inventory ever again so if you want a house you better get out there and buy the one that's left for sale I mean you better get that house I don't care it's got 30 offers on it you better outbid them this is your last chance last chance to get a home at these cheap prices once again this is not my take this is not how I see it now a lot of people think houses will double from here I don't know who they're going to sell them to people can't afford houses now if they double in price I know they can't afford them but where's the inventory going to come from well once again I keep saying that it's going to be for selling for selling okay well there's no for selling yet the foreclosures are still relatively low now what people don't understand is that when you go from well you go from three percent rate in mortgages up to a seven percent rate in mortgages okay that creates it creates well it, it should send the houses down but the common philosophy now is that this is making houses go higher because it's making people not put their house on the market because they're locked in at three percent and they're in a starter home and they want to get a bigger home but they're not going to put their house on the market because it doesn't make sense when you go from three percent to seven percent so they're out of the market right now but the people that are going to be coming into the market are the ones that can no longer afford their properties okay now you go but Mike every Everybody can afford the properties not when they start to lose jobs now we're getting a lot of jobs losses in my area now of course your area there's no job losses but here in Silicon Valley we're getting a lot of layoffs a lot of people are losing their jobs and these are high paying jobs and they no longer have a job so they're out of work now there's a lag time between you get laid off and between the time you put your house onto the market for sale because you have a little money say 
saved up, hopefully you do, because so you can make your mortgage payment for a while. Now, first thing that you're going to stop making the payment on are your cars because you want a place to live. Now, you could go live in your car. A lot of people are doing that. But I say that the car repossessions about 10000 up to 15000 a day right now is, uh, well, it's kind of like a predecessor to what's going to happen in the housing market. The housing market is also going to get forced selling. It's going to get people, they're going to lose their homes in this marketplace. Why? Well, because they can't refinance. They're locked in at 3%. And when you're locked in at 3%, you can't refinance, right? Because the refinance would be at 7% and it would just crush you out of the marketplace. Okay. Now, a lot of people think that this 3% thing is going to save the housing market. Everybody, everybody's locked in. We're not going to have a bust in the housing market for the next 30 years until people pay off their houses because they're locked in at 3%. Because there's not going to be any refinance and you're not going to refinance, right? But okay, let's think about who this 3% hurts, right? All right, let's think about the banking system. Now, the banking system, they bar, they get money from depositors, right? And they were paying them like close to nothing. Close to nothing, okay. And they went out and they loaned the money for you to buy your home and you gave you 3%. So they, they were making a little bit of money, right? They were making the 3% between what they paid their borrowers. Let's say they paid them a half a percent. So they made two and a half percent on the spread, right? All right. So now you're locked in at 3% for 30 years, 30 years. Okay. Now who, now a lot of these banks, they hold this paper. Now they now have to pay their borrowers because the interest rates went up. So they're now paying the borrowers. Let's call it 5%. You can go into a bank and get 5% on a CD right now, certificate of deposit. So they got to pay out 5%, but they got it locked in here at 3% what you're paying them on your million dollar loan, right? You're paying 3%. So they're losing a lot of money on your loan. Okay. And now I believe that every bank out there right now is insolvent. They're insolvent. They, If they had to mark these assets to market when they made that loan of a million dollars on your house, on your house, got a loan for a million dollars, 3%, that was worth a million dollars on their books. But right now with rates up at 7%, if they were to sell that, a mortgage, if they were to sell that, they could not get a million dollars for it. They'd probably get somewhere around, maybe if they're lucky, around, well, $700,000. So they'd take a $300,000 hit, but they don't want to do that, so they don't sell it. And they don't mark it down to the market. But yet these banks have become insolvent. And we've seen the collapse of them. Silicon Valley Bank, it was the first one to go down, right? First Republic, a Credit Suisse. A lot of these banks are starting to go. Okay. Now, all the banks were doing the same thing. Now, of course, Jamie Diamond's bank, he gets to come in and buy the assets for, well, he doesn't even have to pay for them. They just give him the assets. And then he gives all the liabilities, all the liabilities to the taxpayer, me and you. So maybe JP Morgan is still solvent, but I don't even think they're solvent when it comes right down to it. If there's a run on these banks, they don't have your money and they can't sell their assets for enough to get your money because the assets are are not worth that anymore. So you're going to have this credit crunch like you've never seen before. Now, granted, there's lag time. There's lag time between when they raise these rates, these raise rates went up. Well, they were holding them at zero and now the, well, the you can get about 5% on a bond, right? On a bond from the government, uh, four and a half to 5%. Okay. So they raised them up and that's a drastic raise when you're going from 0%, been at 0% for about 14 years. And now they raised them up to 5%, right? Okay. So that there's been this raise and that happened in the about, start about nine months ago and they kept raising. I think they probably get one more raise in there uh, this month. They'll raise it once again in June. Okay, so they're going to continue to raise. Now, they may pause to see what damage is done. Now, the reason they're going to pause is because there is a lag effect between the time that they raise and between the time that it really creates havoc on the economy, between the time they raise and between the job losses that are coming, between the time they raise and between the time of the recession 
depression that they're causing. And in between the time that they raise, in between the time of all the bank failures. Okay, so there's a lag period and they're going to pause and see what happens. And that's probably a good thing to do. And now there's going to become a point where they actually do pivot when they created enough havoc on the economy, on the job losses, on the marketplace, as you will. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs. They're not going to be able to make their payments on their mortgages. There's going to become this forced selling. Now, where does most of the forced selling come from? Where does most of the inventory start to come onto the marketplace? Do you realize it is not? It's typically come on until the Fed actually pivots. Once they pivot, that is where the inventory starts to come on the marketplace. Now, do I think they're going to pivot this year? If they do, it's going to be close to the end of the year, right? I think they're going to pause and there won't be a pivot this year. So it'll probably be either right at the end of this year or the beginning of next year. Okay. And that's where the for selling, the inventory is going to be dumped onto the marketplace. Now you haven't seen anything yet. These are the good times. These are the good times. These are the times where you could get close to the price that Billy Bob got. There's still buyers, but this will shift. This is changing. This is going to change because of the lag time. It hasn't changed yet. There is lag time from when they raise those interest rates to the time of the layoffs. And then from the time of the layoffs to the time of the forced selling. Okay, so they see the layoffs come, the Fed pivots, then the forced selling happens. And that's where you're going to see the spike in inventory coming onto the marketplace. Now, of course, not in your area. I get that. Your area only goes up. And they, I mean, I hear it all the time, you know, they, but Mike, every house has 30 offers on them. I can't buy a house. Now, I don't know why you would want to buy a house right now. Now, now, Redfin comes out and they tell you, they tell you that it's cheaper to rent right now. In most areas, cheaper by about 20 to 25 percent, a lower cost to rent than to buy a home. Why would you want to buy a home at the peak when you can rent a home for 25 percent less? Okay, that's just Redfin, what they're telling you. This isn't me telling you this. They're telling you it's 25 percent cheaper to rent. But the time you don't want to be a homeowner, is obviously when the prices are coming down. When the prices are coming down, what do you want to be? You want to be a renter. Now, when prices are coming down, what else do you not want to do? You don't want to be a house flipper. If you're a house flipper, you buy it and then the price comes down as you're fixing it up. You buy it at this price, you're remodeling, you're putting all this money into it, but the prices are dropping so fast that you cannot recoup your money. So home flippers are going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt a lot. But right now is a really good time to be a renter. Redfin will tell you it's 20 to 25 percent cheaper to rent a home in most areas of the U.S. Now, of course, not your area. I don't know what goes on in your area, but I know I know that prices never go down. Prices never go down in your area, and that's a great area to live in. That's a great area to buy in. But as the U.S. itself, it's going to feel a lot of pain in this housing bust. Now, of course, Yahoo, Yahoo says that if you don't own a home now, you're going to be screwed for the next 30 years because we're not going to have a home bust in the next 30 years. Listen to Barbara Cochran. Best time ever to buy a house right now. Dave Ramsey, houses never go down, they only go up. All of this is not my take. Now, your take may be, once again, completely different. A lot of people, they get upset when I talk about this stuff. They really do. They really get upset. Now, here, I got to give a shout out again to my well, my favorite hater of the week. He goes by the term I pass. He doesn't even have a name. He just passes on everything. I guess he passed on my channel. But you see the haters, they come out. And, you know, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, we didn't even have remote controls to the TV set. If we wanted to change the channel, we'd have to get up off the couch and we'd have to manually change the channel. Then we got the remote controls. So easy to change the channel. But these people on YouTube, apparently they don't know how to change the channel. They would rather stay on the channel they hate and then they'd rather give a long, a long comment. You know, not a short little one like, I hate your channel. Now some people do that, but this guy writes me this 
this long, long comment about why I'm so wrong, why he hates my channel, but I love the last two sentences. I'm just going to read you his last two sentences. You have no idea what you're talking about, and I cursed the YouTube algorithm that served up this clueless video. I curse the YouTube algorithm that served up this clueless video. Now, if you're watching a clueless video, why would you watch it all the way through? Why would you take your time to write this long comment that, by the way, helps those YouTube algorithms that you're cursing, it helps them to advance my channel. So I love the haters. I pass. I think you might have passed on my channel, but if you're still watching, I give you the thumbs up, my friend. Anyways, if you like this stuff, it's Friday, and we got that long weekend ahead. Get out there, enjoy the weekend, but first give me the thumbs up and hit punch the subscribe button, especially if you're a hater. You really want to subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye now.